What if you could live to 120? New developments in bioscience mean that we could soon be living dramatically longer, healthier lives. We have a very good chance of getting to 110 or 120 within 30 years. Increasing longevity is an outcome of some of these incredible developments in healthcare that we're seeing. With longer lives come also higher growth. With a higher growth, that means we can do more. We will be living longer and in better health, and that presents opportunities. What could a longer life mean for you, your family, and your investments? Silicon Valley is home to some of the world's leading specialists in longevity. Dr. Aubrey de Grey is pioneering multiple new treatments, such as gene therapy, research that could limit and even reverse the impact of aging. You have to remember that aging is simply the process of self-inflicted damage accumulation. The reason these things accumulate is because we in the human genome do not have any genes encoding enzymes that can destroy these substances. But bacteria, some bacteria, do have such genes. So what we do is we identify those bacteria and then we tweak the genes so that we can put those genes into human cells and they still work. In the search for a breakthrough in longevity, the key areas of focus include small molecule drug discovery, gene editing and stem cell research. All of life expectancy improvements in the last hundred years where human life expectancy has more or less doubled has occurred as a result of environmental factors as a result of improvements in sanitation, less infant mortality, less accidents at work, antibiotics. There has been no uh, interference with fundamental biology that has caused an increase in longevity. Now we are able to fundamentally manipulate uh, biology and that's coming very quickly. The accelerated pace of this innovation is being driven by rapid advances in artificial intelligence. We use AI to speed up drug discovery dramatically you can actually generate new drugs from the scratch that will be efficient right away. And also you can explore new chemical spaces because right now we're only scratching the surface of the chemical space. We're only looking for a small drop in the ocean of chemicals that are available there that could potentially be really, really effective therapies. It's not hard to understand that AI is going to play a major role in healthcare. We're getting more data than ever, whether it's genetic data, diagnostic data, that we previously weren't able to necessarily make sense of. The result? The next generation could live much longer than we think is possible today. When we live longer, the three-stage life, full-time education, full-time work, full-time retirement, looks ridiculous. If we live to 100, we're going to be working until we're 70 or 80. And that means that one career is never going to be enough. We'll have to have multiple careers. At the same time, artificial intelligence, machine learning is transforming work. So we have to upskill and reskill right the way through our life. With the rise of automation and AI, but also with people living longer and working longer, lifelong learning is going to become one of the major trends for edtech. There's going to be huge amounts of investment. It's already worth over £275 billion annually spent on workplace learning. And I think that's only going to continue to grow. An aging population means that probably we'll all need to work longer. On the positive side of that, of course, is that you live longer, you probably have a better physical, better mental and better cognitive health. Education is fundamentally social in its nature and we're seeing that people value being surrounded by other people who have similar learning goals to them. People are turning to face-to-face -to -face classes, so it's not as you'd assume that everyone is turning to online learning. How could the rise in flexible working and learning patterns affect the way we choose to live? communal types of city housing could rise in popularity. As population increases in urban centres, the size and purpose of the space in people's homes will have to change. As there is an increase in multi-generational living and people work more flexibly, the demand on the modern home will change fundamentally. So multi-generational living is happening all over the world. It's not just in the UK. Generations are tending to move towards each other, to support each other the elderly supporting the younger, the younger having the need because of the cost of living. Co-living spaces and multi-generational housing are some of the fastest growing property sectors across the world. 
in Japan, you've got a form where you have one house on top of another house. As you're less mobile, you're on the lower level. As you're more mobile, you're on the upper level. But this support mechanism that is there through the cycle of life. As developments in medical science bring us closer to a world of much longer life expectancies, opportunities are opening up for innovative companies. It's an incredibly interesting time to be working at the intersection and convergence of technologies that are radically reshaping the way that we're addressing some of the world's biggest problems, and that includes aging. But there are still many challenges the next generation will need to overcome. What happens when everyone lives to 100? Well, the gloom and doom scenario is that pensions bust, become unviable, and health costs become a huge proportion of a country's budget. But it doesn't need to be that way. There could be a dividend to us living longer, but that dividend relies on us working into our 70s and 80s. With aging, uh, naturally, we all tend to save more and consume less, which is the flip side of it. And those saving investment imbalances, with the savings increasing, it means that interest rates will be dropping. That poses challenges for central banks because if the equilibrium interest rate is lower, then we're stuck in a low return, low interest rate environment. Longevity is a nascent science. There will be many failures, many overhyped stocks on the stock market. But rather like the internet from 1992 to 2000 when there was a huge bust, from the ashes there emerged companies such as Google and from the ashes of whatever overhyped mania in this longevity space, there will emerge some very significant companies. At Barclays Private Bank, we always keep ahead of world-changing trends to ensure our clients make the right decisions about their investments. Like many topics, longevity is of keen interest to many of our clients. They want to understand what are the technologies that are supporting this, this kind of advancement and how can we bring that to them in a way that they can invest and participate. Read our full report on the challenges and opportunities of longevity. I quite fancy a world in which nobody gets sick. Don't you? 